to the world you created, trading your crown for a cross. You willingly died, your innocent life paid the cost. And counting your status as nothing, the King of all kings came to serve. Washing my feet, covering me with your love. If more of you means less of me, take everything. Yes, all of you is all I need. Take everything. Desires and dreams I lay down. Yes, here at your feet, my desires and dreams I lay down. If more of you means less of me, take everything. Yes, all of this time to come together and worship you 
and to open your word together. And God, we pray you'd have your way in this meeting today, that you would change hearts and change lives and draw us closer to you. We give you all the glory for what you're going to do here today. Amen. You may be seated. If you are watching on Facebook Live and you just came on board, that's my bad. I'm sorry. Um, and on that list, by the way, if you want to see, make sure you check uh, tech guy, uh, tech person. <laughs> I would love that. That'd be great. Uh, thank you so much. Um, but uh, we do have several people that uh, watch online on Facebook Live every week just uh, um, still um, who are, uh, you know, just working through this, this uh, COVID uh, scare and uh, Lord willing, we're continuing to pray, continuing to press in, uh, and we thank God that the vaccines are available. We thank God that uh, that that spring is coming, and uh, hopefully with that, um, the healing uh, for this. Uh, for this disease as well. So uh, anyway, uh, welcome uh, again, once again, uh, as we as we get ready for this uh, sermon today, turn in your Bibles to Luke chapter 11. We are continuing through our series uh, through Luke. We actually started it last Christmas, so it's been over a year now. We've been going verse by verse through the book of Luke uh, and just really diving deep into what God's Word says to us each week. And then uh, this past five weeks, we unpacked every bit of the Lord's Prayer and just really dissected it. And so if you're new here or if you missed any of those weeks, go to our website and look and listen to some of those sermons because I really believe we have done a great job of unpacking and deciphering um, the doctrine and uh, uh, the truth that comes out of that, uh, that, that very famous and very popular prayer, the Lord's Prayer. And so we're going to uh, kind of over the next two weeks, now that we've learned the Lord's Prayer, we're going to kind of uh, uh, see, okay, now what? You know, what do we do that? We put a nice little bow on this idea of prayer uh, today and then next week. Before we get into a church planting, uh, this is a church plant. If you didn't know if this is your first week and you're like, oh, okay, this is a nice little church. This nice little church started just over two years ago. And uh, it was uh, basically, it was me and my wife and my mother. And yeah, that was how it started. And it was just pretty much us. And, um, and Cindy back there, Cindy and Dave are wonderful greeters. Uh, Cindy cuts my hair and she's like, hey, I live on John's Island. I said, great. And so uh, Cindy and Dave came on. And so it started with five of us. You know, we weren't one of those church plants that start with a bunch of people that come on and a bunch of money and all that kind of stuff. We really started just with a couple of people. And we started, got on Facebook and said, hey, we're doing this thing. And someone said, that sounds cool. And they jumped on board. And so it was just this really, you know, amazing thing. You know, I came into this church plant with over 25 years of church ministry experience. I knew how to preach already. I knew how to teach. I knew how to counsel. I knew how to assemble and manage ministry budgets. I knew how to manage teams. All that I thought it took to pastor a church, I knew how to do. And almost immediately... I realized that I didn't know anything because church planting is not the same as pastoring a church. I'll never forget, before we started the church, Audra and I, you would not believe how much attention my wife and I spent on, you know, a pastor's office and a pastor's chair. You know, uh, you need to have a nice chair because you walk into a pastor's office, it should feel like the pastor, you know, is, you know, a, 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 you know, um, 
it has respect. You can't just have this nasty old youth pastor chair and that kind of thing. You wouldn't believe how much attention we thought to things like that. And then I realized as we planted this church, this is not that. Being a pastor of a church plant is not the same as being a church at First Baptist whatever town or, or, or whatever church. It, it, it's completely different because you go into a church, like if I would have became a pastor of a church that already existed, there's a salary already established. There's a budget already established. And what I learned as I began, uh, as, as we started into this adventure of church planting, is it begins with a vision, and almost immediately it pivots into fundraising. And when you don't have a congregation, there's no one to give. It's like, you know, there's only so much me and Audrey and my mom could give. And so I started going, Audrey and I went to every friend and every family member asking for their support for our vision to reach John's Island with the gospel of Jesus. And can I just tell you, it takes a lot of humility to ask people for money. You know, and, and by the way, before you got your, your first time here, it's like, I come to church and he's going to be talking about money. No, that's not what this sermon is about. That's not what this is about at all. It's not about that. It's just, I, I remember those first days of the humility of having to go to people. And, you know, because the existence of the church re re relied on people investing into the kingdom. And so it, it took a lot of humility. It took a lot of gumption. It was a lot of embarrassing conversations, a lot of, well, um, let me pray about that. You know, it was a lot, a lot of those. And one thing I learned is I can't leave it at that. I had to, you know, you had to press in. You had to follow that up. You had to say, okay, all right, you prayed. Now, which part of that prayer meant that God told you you're not supposed to give to the kingdom because I want to know. And, and, and so it was difficult because the vision and the stakes are too great. It was too, it, the vision is too important. The stakes are too important for me just to say to be passive if I had, I had to go to those people and I had to really press in and say, please, please buy into what God is doing here at Live Oak Church and on John's Island. And so we're going to look at that idea of of pressing in, that idea of, uh, of, uh, of not giving up. And so let's pray and we'll jump into God's word. Lord, thank you for this day and I, pray, I thank you for your word. I pray, God, that I would be faithful to the text, to the context. Lord, I pray that every person in this room would have their hearts open to what you want for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, we're in Luke chapter 11, starting with verse 5. It'll be from verse 5 to verse 10. And Jesus said to him, which of you who has a friend will go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves for a friend of mine has arrived on a journey and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within, do not bother me. The door is shut and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, though, he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend. Yet because of his impudence, he will rise and give him whatever he needs. And I tell you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and the one who seeks finds and to the one who knocks it will be opened. So this is a, an amazing little prayer when you consider it came right, an amazing little story, a little parable that Jesus told right after he gave them the model for prayer. And so basically what this is doing, what we're doing today is this is the application of the Lord's Prayer. The last five weeks we have, you know, kind of uh, uh, looked at and dissected the Lord's Prayer. And now this week we're looking at the application of of prayer. And then next week, Pastor Barty will be looking at the heart of prayer. And so it, well, before we do that, let's just jump in. Let's do a little bit of review of the Lord's Prayer. Uh, the the first, first part of the prayer is, Our Father, hallowed be thy name. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. We are adopted into the, uh, to, to the kingdom of God through Jesus Christ. So God is our Father. We have that sense of adoption. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We are now tasked to bring God's kingdom to earth. We are tasked to pray that God's will would be done, not our will. 
that we are, we are now striving to reverse our selfish ways instead of I to thy. And then forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. We are to be a forgiving people, a compassionate people. And as we recognize that we are forgiven, it is in that spirit that we should love and forgive and be compassionate to others. Give us each day our daily bread. We unpack this idea that we are to every day be in need, every day lean in, every day depend on our Lord. And then lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Recognize that we are in a battle, that there is an enemy. He hates you, and he desires to make you miserable. And so that is the prayer. So that is what he has given us to pray. So and how do we apply that prayer? We have a couple of things uh, that we're going to look at today. Uh, the first point is that we need to pray shamelessly. We need to pray shamelessly. When those days, those early days of Live Oak Church, when I had those meetings and everyone knew that I was planting a church. And so when I said, hey, can I take you for coffee? They knew what that meant. They knew that I didn't want coffee. Now, I love coffee and everyone knows that, but they knew that it wasn't about the coffee. They knew I was fixing to ask them for something. And so, by the way, that doesn't mean that now, okay? If I ask you for coffee, we could just want coffee, okay? That's fine. But back in the day, I just was shamelessly saying, okay, I need your help. Notice that the man didn't give in because of his friendship. I, I, love, <laughs> I love how Jesus tells that story. Um, he says, I tell you, though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend. He's like, he didn't get up because he was his friend. He got up. I tell you, though, uh, uh, yet because of his impudence, uh, another, ver uh, another word for that is his persistence. He didn't get up because he was his friend. He got up because he wouldn't stop knocking. I mean, it takes a little bit of shamelessness when someone tells you it's midnight, go away. And you knock again. Now, again, Jesus says he didn't do this because he's his friend, but I'm telling you, he had to be a good friend because I love you. I'm your pastor, but if you come at my house at midnight and not somebody better be bleeding, okay? I'm just saying. I mean, you know, I, I go to bed early, so, you know, he knocked. Go away. No, I need it. Go away. No. Pray shamelessly. You, 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 you got to... You know, he, he, he knew his ask was less than couth. He knew that this was rude. He knew that this is not the way you're supposed to do things. When you close the door and you're in bed, you're supposed to leave people alone. Everybody knew that. This is not just, well, back in that day, the culture. No, back in that day, that was rude too, okay? In Jesus' day, it was just as rude as it is right now if you come knocking on my door for a loaf of bread at midnight. And so he knew it was rude, and, and so he knew that there was not couth. He knew there was not couth, but apparently this was that important. We don't know anything about these friends that came in, but we do know there was that important. He knew that this ask may cost him the friendship, but it didn't matter because he needed it. And guys, I'm telling you, we got to develop a spirit of prayer that we press in so hard to God. We press in so hard. We're so shameless in our prayers to God that we annoy the Lord. Have you ever been to Chick-fil-A when you're in a bad mood? Because they're trained to be nice, like ridiculously nice. Like, it is my pleasure. And it's like, just give me the chicken nuggets, you know? I mean, it's like, I don't want to hear about your pleasure. Just give me the chicken nuggets, you know? And, and it's just so annoying. And so, and I think it, we, in our life as believers, we got to get to that place. And when we believe in something, we're, we're needing something, we're desiring something, we have to press into God shamelessly. We have to just go in. And, and even if you don't feel like it, you just press in. God is not answering from a locked house saying, do not bother me. He's saying, listen, the friend, he didn't open up the door because he was his friend. He opened up the door because he was persistent. And what Jesus was saying is, listen, this prayer that I gave you, 
What has happened through the generations as we've used this prayer, this model prayer, the Lord's prayer, is we use it as like this ritual will say these prayers. And Jesus says, listen, whatever you do, we have done what he told us not to do. He said, listen, this isn't just something to recite, to pray. What I'm telling you to do is I want you to pray and I want you to persist. I want you to be annoyingly, obnoxiously persistent and you be shameless in your pressing into God. He's like, even the friend was willing to open the door and give you the daggum bread. God is not answering from a locked house. He's saying, He's not saying, do not bother me. He's saying, listen, I want you to ask. I want you to seek. I want you to knock. I want you to come to me. I want to bless you. I want you to be persistent. I want you to come after me. That is the persistent prayer. That's what he's calling us to do. That's what he's asking us to do with this simple Lord's Prayer that we use. That we don't simply recite it out of ritual uh, out of ritual. Um, uh, devotion, but we that we use this prayer, that we use the spirit of that prayer, and that we go after God. So number one, that we have to pray shamelessly. Number two, we have to pray persistently. Verse eight says, I tell you, though he will not not get up, oh, we just said that, not get up and give him anything because of his friend, yet because of his impudence, because of his persistence, he will rise. Do not be passive. Pray persistently. Our prayer life as a believer, we should not pray passively. We should have a urgency. We should have a persistency. We should have a desire, a hunger when we pray. If you want to know what it's like to pray, to have a persistent attitude, take a toddler to a toy store. Hey, can I have that? Can I have that? Can I have that? Can I, oh, I want that. I want that. I want that. No, can I have that? Can I have that? Ooh, I want that. I want that. That that persistence, that would you stop? Would you stop talking? I mean, my middle, oh, my middle daughter's here. I get to bug her in front of her two friends. My middle daughter, I mean, when she was younger, she would, you know, I, you know it, the thing about her, she's awesome. She's a great kid. She's creative. She's beautiful. She's wonderful. And, every way but i tell you there are times that i swear she gets paid by the word and especially when she was a toddler she's like hey dad holy cow breathe i mean how in the world and she just kept going and going and going and, and so uh, when i think about a persistent prayer is someone who just presses in and just goes 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 like a toddler after god in prayer and in life success is with those who press in and press on. Too often we hit an obstacle, and like we discussed last week, and if you weren't here last week, you need to listen to that online. Too often we hit an obstacle, we hit a struggle, and we immediately seek a way out of it instead of praying and pressing into it. Too often we see a storm and we try to go around when God's like, I need you to go through the storm. There is no one that you respect in ministry. There is no one that you respect in missions. There is no one you respect in business or in life that quit when things got hard, that quit when they got their first no. Men, most of you in here would be single if you quit when you got your first no. Amen? I mean, so, so we have to be persistent. I mean, we have to be persistent. We have to, we have to get in there. We have to, Lord, you have to press in and press in and press in. You don't quit when the struggle, when you're praying and you get a struggle or when something happens, we're like, oh, I guess that's not God. And so you quit. Don't quit too easily. If you feel this is something that God's laid on your heart, you press in and you press in. You don't stop when the first struggle comes. You don't stop when the first hardship comes. You don't stop. When the first no comes, we're in bed. Go away. No. God, I'm praying that you would allow this to happen in my life. And it just seems always that the next day or that same week, something happens, a struggle, a sickness, car breaks down. Something happens, and you're like, 
Well, I guess that's God's answer. I'm not supposed to do it. No. Press in. Be persistent. Pray. Keep going after God. Pray with persistence. Pray that knowing that God has what you need and that he cares for you. Pray knowing that he has the answer. Pray knowing that he has everything that you need. Pray persistently. Number three, pray expectantly. Verse 9 and 10 says, I tell you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and the one who seeks finds and the one who knocks, it will be opened. The correct version of this actually uh, the correct tense in the scripture is to keep praying, keep on asking, keep on seeking, keep on knocking. It's an it's a, a active way of speaking this. And so it's like, I tell you, to keep on asking, and it will be given to you. Keep on seeking, and you'll find it. Keep on knocking, and it will be opened to you. Jesus shares a story after he gives the example of prayer. If you have the right spirit and the right motives, because motives matter, remember that. As we pray, motives matter. If you have, but that's that's why Jesus lined up that 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 prayer the way he did. Father, hallowed be thy name. You recognize that you are adopted into God's uh, family and you're you are positioned in the, the the lineage of God. Hallowed be thy name. Give us, you know, your kingdom come, your will be done. And we align our life with Jesus' life. And so you start doing that and you place your spirit in the right place. When the motives are right, when the prayer is pure, then pray and expect. You've heard the saying, if you pray for rain, you carry an umbrella. God's calling some of you to something huge. God's calling you to something massive. He's calling you to to incredible endeavors, incredible journeys, incredible adventures, but you're afraid to take the step. And I'm telling you, when you pray, you pray persistently. You pray with urgency. You pray and you know that God's got this. So what do we do with this? This season, I want to ask a couple of things. I want to ask, what are we asking for? What are we searching for? And what doors are we hoping to be opened? And so I want to unpack a little bit for you. This is what I've been doing with for the church i've been praying in in my little journal uh you know what am i asking for for live oak church not me that's none of your business but what are you what are we asking for for live oak church i'm praying i I, i'm asking for a praying people who are committed to his word and reaching those who are far from god but close to them who are generous and compassionate i'm praying for favor with our community to see live oak church as a lighthouse as a sanctuary and as a resource for those in need, I'm praying that, ch- that Live Oak Church will be that place if anybody on any of the Facebook pages that something's happening, something's going on, and someone's like, this person needs help, I pray that there'll be like a zillion comments underneath it that there is an automatic Live Oak Church is where you go. Because that is the lighthouse to John's Island. That is the sanctuary to John's Island. That is the resource for those who are in need. That is what I'm asking for. This season, what are we searching for? I'm searching for men and women of God to accomplish the mission of God through the church. I'm I'm searching for every man and woman and child in Live Oak Church to know what they're called to do, know their spiritual gifts, know what their talents are, and say, how can I, through Live Oak Church, use it to accomplish a mission of Live Oak Church for the community? How can I help Live Oak Church love God, love people, and live boldly? How am I equipped to help do that? What can I do? How, how am I wired? Some of you are wired with hospitality. You know, and you're like, I don't want to talk or teach or do anything, but I love parties. I love having people in my house. I love Pinteresting up my not you know is it Pinterest yeah Pinteresting up my house so it looks just all bougie and and just all you know I you know you may have that kind of thing that you just love 
doing that to your house? Well, you know what? You're a perfect host for a life group. There ain't no way in the Lord world that you're going to teach a life group, but you're like, hey, I'll host one. Because there's some of you that are going to teach, you're like, yeah, I'm not cleaning up my house every week. And so maybe you're a good teacher, and so we need teachers, we need hosts, we need people who are going to step up, we need people who are like, I love kids, or, you know, and, and so, uh, you know, man, there's just incredible children's ministries going on, or, or uh, you know, I wish I was still a teenager. Well, great, we have a student ministry on Wednesday night, and you can pretend to be a teenager again. I mean, there's all kinds of things. You know, I love coffee. We'll stick you in the coffee shop. It's like, well, you know what? I don't like people. We'll put you on the parking team, and you don't even have to look at a person. You just look at cars. I mean, you know, there's all kinds of things. How are you wired? You know, well, I really love to sing. If you're good at it, we'll put you up here. If you're not, we'll leave you out there. And so, you know, how are you wired? How are you, how are you e equipped and how can you be used by God? I am searching for every man, woman, and child to accomplish the mission of Live Oak Church. I'm searching for those around us who are lost and broken because that's what this is about. Live Oak Church can't just be a holy huddle where people come and simply come and, and receive. We can't be gluttonous. We can't be just a place where we come and receive and receive and receive. I got blessed. Well, what are you doing with that blessing? I'm praying that God would reveal to us those who are lost and those who are broken. What doors are we hoping to be opened? As we, what doors are we knocking on? Quite frankly, I'm knocking on. I'm like, Lord, we're two years old. And we're having to go to two services because these are weird days and we can't be packed. And so eventually we're going to need a, a, a bigger and a permanent home. Eventually we're going to have to stop worrying about when our lease is up and are we going to be homeless. And so I'm knocking on the door and I'm saying, God, open up that door. Let us find our permanent home for Live Oak Church. So this season, that's what I'm asking for. That's what I'm searching for. That's what I'm hoping, the door I'm hoping to be opened. And so as I pivot, as we respond, this is what I want you to do. And on the back of your ministry guide, this is what, if you have room, I want you to write this down. What are you asking for? This season in life, what are you asking for? This season in life, what are you searching for? What doors are you hoping for? to be opened. Jesus finished the prayer and he said to them, which of you has a friend that will go to him at midnight and say, friend, I have three loaves. Live me three loaves of bread. Which of you are willing to go to God and say, I need it. I've said several times that I believe that 2021 for Live Oak Church, that the theme for us is just to be a people of prayer. It can't simply be reciting a prayer, ritualistic. We have to have the spirit of God we have to be desperate in our longing for God to do something in our lives. We've got to press in. And when you feel like you're getting, when you feel like you're annoying God, when you feel like you are just a little too Chick-fil-A at the moment, I want you to press in again. I want you to continue to press in. And when you think God's annoyed with you, I want you to continue to press in. I want you to press in until God says, okay. And so I just ask us all, as we enter into the season, as we enter into this next season of life in our country, in the world, in our church, in your life, that you would be a people of prayer, that you would be persistent, and that you would never let up. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you so much for this day. Thank you, God, that you are faithful. 
And God, as we press in, as we become more and more persistent, as we, as we know that we are led by you, God, as the motives are pure, as the heart is right, we pray. Forgive us, Lord, for giving up too quickly. Forgive us, Lord, for backing off when we come across a struggle. If it's worth it, it's worth pressing in. And so, God, I just pray that you give us all a sense of passion, a sense of boldness. In Jesus' name we pray.